This is Flame Tongue Kafu, or FTK as it's known. It's a four-legged -leg lizard beast of muscle and claws that just shot a blast of fire into a drake or dragon. When it was printed in 2001, it was a powerhouse with its cost of 4 mana for 4 power and 4 damage to a creature. According to Marshall Sutcliffe, it's one of the most powerful creatures ever printed. Resolving Flametum Kavu often results in killing a creature while the Kavu stays in play. It's not only a first pick in limited, says Melissa de Tora, but potentially a game winner. It was so powerful it generated its own Flametom Kavu test, which Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan discuss in their Plane Shift episode of The Resleevables, saying the cards it's good against just couldn't show up in the meta in the first place. Its strength firmly solidified Flametongue Kafu as an iconic piece of magic history and would be referenced again and again in years to come. In 2005 there was a Flametongue Kafu avatar to use in the Vanguard variant on Magic Online when it looked like this. In 2006 Time Spiral had Firemark Kafu. In 2018 Dominaria's story told how Tiana had to drive off a Kafu, its tongue of flame. And in 2021, Modern Horizons 2 had Flametongue Yearling. Despite FTK's popularity, Kafu are not nearly as memorable as, say, Slivers or Eldrazi. Well, there are certainly fans, look at this FTK plushie! It's mostly forgotten what a Kafu is and what they did for Dominaria. Listen to what Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan say later on in the same Resleevables episode. What the hell is Flametongue's deal? It has nothing to do with anything, and it's so powerful. Well, it's a Kafu! Uh, okay, sure. Do you know what a Kavu is? I don't What's have the slightest Kavu? idea, no. Why don't they make them anymore? Because no one knows what a Kavu is. I couldn't tell. No, you. I can't either. I literally make the game, I don't know what a Kavu is. Flame Tone Kavu's family was instrumental in holding back the Phyrexian invasion during the Wrath overlay. So let's take a look at the Kavu of Dominaria. The word Kafu, both singular and plural, is also an ancient druidic word meaning ever watchful and carved from stone. Their first appearance in the story is in the book Invasion. Almost a hundred pages in, Multani is fighting the Phyrexians in Yavimaya and losing. Unbeknown to him and us, Gaia has been stowing away a race of creatures deep on the ground for emergency defense. The Kafu pour out of the world, first and foremost in Yavimaya, but emerge all over Dominaria. Within moments of arriving, the Kafu prove their worth in battle. Kafu are part ground sloth, part saurian, with frilled heads and four or six limbs that end in both claws and hoofs. They range in size from human size to the equivalent of two elephants. But what makes them really stand out are their tongues, which are described as longer, more powerful, more dexterous than elephant trunks. The Kafu aren't just fighting Phyrexians, they're eating them, using their tongues like a chameleon does. Blizzard tongues lashed out, snatched up carapaced monsters and drew them into their fangy mouths. While these Kafu might feel like a deus ex machina in the story, Miltani even comments on them being seemingly conjured out of thin air. It's at least amusing that it's used against an army of a literal machine god. For the plane shift book, we need to take a step back and start with the dragon, Darigas. There's a whole subplot going on with Darigas getting the band back together. He frees Rith, who is embedded in the Magnagoth tree in Yavimaya since before the Brothers War. When Rith is freed from the tree, the Kafu come into action and cry a mournful song to awaken a Magnagoth guardian. The humongous tree folks try through the seas from Yavimaya on a twisted path to Orborg following Rith. A hundred fellow Magnagoth tree folk follow, each filled to the brim with Kafu. When the tree folk arrive in Orborg, the Kafu wake up hungry. So they do what they do best eat more Phyrexians. This was not a battle, but a feast, the book says. And in their ecstasy, the Kafu emit a metallic purr. In the last book of the trilogy, the Kafu are little more than beasts of burden, to be ridden like war horses by the bipedal heroes Linsifi, Grizzlegom and Eladamri. The Kafu are still excellent murder machines though. However, what is a returning thing in this book is the comparison of Kafu to cats. In Plane Shift they seem to purr and in Apocalypse there are these two passages. Despite its tremendous size, the Kavu stepped gingerly among its own troops, careful not to crush them. Its clawed feet came to the ground, kitten soft. And... 
Kafu scattered back away from the stones and crouched against the mountainside. They edged forward like cats on the prowl. It is entertaining to think of Kafu as six-legged, elephant-sized cats that catch their prey with their tongues, like some form of messed up Totoro cat bus. In 2011, Doc Byer wrote an article on Magic's exclusive creature types. To qualify for inclusion, there were three prerequisites. One, the creature type has to be unique to Magic. Two, the creature type has to have a characteristic look. Three, the creature type has to have appeared in more than one block. The Kafu easily passed the first two points, but back then there were only three Kafu outside of Invasion block. That changed in 2018, with a return to Dominaria. We got some new cards and an accompanying art book with world building details. In hindsight, the Kafu's continued existence was clearly hinted at, with Kafu Climbers inclusion in Masters 25. Cassie LaBelle talks about Kafu Climber and 8 other reprints in her article The Dominarian Roots of Masters 25. The Kafu nowadays are an important part of the Calfe culture. The Yavimayan elves are divided into different kingdoms, or elfhames, one of which is named Calfe. At birth, a Calfe elf is partnered with a Kafu pup. Pup? Not kitten? Okay. The two are raised together and taught to trust each other. An example of this is Halar and the Kafu Serahane. On a related note, the militant order of the Steel Leaf still exists and also employ Kafu as mounts to ride into battle with. Not long after Dominaria, in Modern Horizons 2 we didn't just have another reference to Flame Tongue Kafu and Flame Tongue Yearling, but also Territorial Kafu. With all of that happening, we think we can safely say the Kafu are the surfing of the title Exclusive Creature Type to Magic. In August 2021, a concept art image by Magali Villeneuve for the upcoming Dominaria United was published by Wizards. On it we see the coalition symbol, which was used as invasion set symbol and can be found on some Kafu as well. It's a whole visual theme in the invasion block on cards with kicker. A cycle of comments from plane shifts makes up each separate part of the icon. Beyond the invasion block, the symbol appears only three times. On the new art of Coalition Relic from Masters 25, on Gerard's belt on the new card from Commander 2019, and on the Mystery Booster playset card and Roll in the Coalition. All the ingredients are here. The Coalition symbol, a Yavi Mayan Elf and even the name Dominaria United are reminiscent of the Invasion block. New Kafu were released as recently as this year. While each separate fact says not much by itself, we are hopeful that in Dominaria United we'll see more Kafu. Maybe we'll get more details or even a story about the Kelfe Elves and their connection with the Kafu. We'd love it if the bond between Halar and Serahane got explored. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.